Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Saints Gaming Channel. Today, I am joined by Dan, and I will be your analyst slash post, I guess, uh, Gabriel, a.k.a. Blockbeat. So we got a game of League of Legends lined up for today. Absolutely. Going to be a good one, of course. We've got Northern Kentucky University, I guess, trying to... Get a little bit of a revenge kill after we took down Western Kentucky University just last week. But we'll have to see how that one ends up going. Both of these teams currently with a 2-0 record. But our Saints have been on something else. I guess something else is in the water for our league squad as of late. <laughs> because they have been making these games... Very um, short. Speed run worthy to say at least yeah, so far sure. here. I mean, what we had Star like a 20 minute game at some point. We had, I think, a 17 minute uh, last week, oh, which yeah, was absolutely one. ridiculous. Yeah, so. that was terrifying. <laughs> They're just on an absolute another level, but we'll see. <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, the Saints just play really well in the current meta. They play their champions really well. The Smolder being absolutely broken right now and having their ADCs, you know, being competent with those uh, champions definitely puts them in the lead. And then uh, mainly Maddie's ability in the jungle to just get those early leads. We saw him pull out the Elise at some point mm -hmm. just to say, all right, you know what? I'm just going to snowball this game single-handedly. And I mean, th that's pretty much what he did. Um, so we're probably going to be seeing some really interesting plays coming out uh, from the Saints. We might even see some tomfoolery getting up to. Oh, it's possible, absolutely. <laughs> um, but what are your thoughts? What are your like expectations for this match? Well, I mean, they kind of set the bar pretty high considering the last couple of weeks. Um, I don't want to say I expect this to go 20 minutes, but um, it's kind of hard to bet against our Saints right now. We did have the opportunity to take a look at a couple of the rankings from the other team. And granted, yes, they're 2-0. And to be fair, we're like we were talking about a little bit uh, prior to the broadcast, your solo queue rank and how you are in a team environment, completely different. Sure. But on paper... I'm a little worried here for Northern Kentucky. Yeah, but as, uh, here we go. Yeah. We did see this earlier. The teams are pretty much right on point. <laughs> We're going into draft. Yeah, all right. So draft, time for some analysis. Uh, we're seeing here the first few bands coming out. Saints <laughs> going to ban out the Fiora because, let's be honest, she's annoying, even though I play Fair her a lot. Uh, the Smolder actually being banned, uh, which, I mean, he is a threat, but the Saints also play him, so it's kind of surprising to see him banned. And the Kindred being banned out. Kindred being a really uh, carry jungler. Uh, so right. having that banned out definitely blocks their jungler from carrying the game itself. The Sin Zhao, the Gragas, and the Silas ban on the side uh, of Kentucky University here. Uh, pretty good bans uh, all around, blocking out both the jungle and the mid lane. Mm -hmm. uh, the first pick actually going to be a Twisted Fate flex here. Twisted Fate in this current meta being played top, mid, ADC. You can pretty much play him anywhere. Uh, so it's interesting to see that flex come out. Mm -hmm. The Vi and the Airy going to pick be picked on uh, one and two. So that picking your mid jungle combo here is actually not a bad call uh, because basically you're just instating, all right, you know what? We have this. If we can get like an AP top laner and then uh, either dual AD uh, bot lane or we can get an AD top laner and then an AP AD bot lane type thing. Um, it's just a really good staple pick to start mm -hmm. off your draft. The Zaya going to be picked up. Okay, so this TF can now only be fit flex top and mid and sure enough we did kind of get teased this a little bit last week oh. maddie was saying that if the opportunity arises we very well could see the nidalee come out and from discussing it with you before it's like it's not necessarily like super rare but i feel like it's been forever since i personally saw the nidalee as we do also see the zaya come out for rock boom and we're yep. going to see the Kaisa coming out here for Northern Kentucky as the bands do continue. And it looks like they're going to separate the uh, the lovers here, going to take out the Rakan. Yeah, taking out the Rakan. I mean, whenever you see a Zaya, you want to get rid of the Rakan. It's just kind of a staple. Although, ooh, hold on. They're swapping off to the last okay, minute. Okay, Ricky banning, target. <laughs> banning Ricky's, uh, Ricky's Darius. Not too I surprising. Mean, it is smart, scary. Smart. Yeah. They also got rid of the Gragas too, which we've seen him play a bunch during the season as well. So fair enough in that regard. Does that eventually leave up the Rakan, or we'll have to see as well. I mean, they can still ban it on uh, on five, mm. but... No Cassante gaming this time. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Let's be honest, Cassante's a little bit busted, even after all the nerfs and weirder than whatever the hell else happened to him. <laughs> Mate He's always seems busted. to find himself meta. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, Cassante is his own meta. He, he just <laughs> exists. 
Um, but yeah, so here, I mean, they're pretty much forced to ban the Rakan on uh, five, but they're going to opt for the Renekton. Okay, okay, just keep targeting Ricky, why don't you? My goodness. Well, and then they're going to pick oh, the Rakan for okay, themselves. You know okay, what? fair that's, enough, that's fair enough. possible, yeah. Picking the Rakan on four, uh, that makes sense. So here on four, five, where do they pick? Um, good supports here. The Lulu goes well with Zaya. Uh, that extra on hit is nice. But, hmm, I don't know. There's a possibility you might want some engaged supports like a Nautilus, although the Nautilus was banned. Uh, Zaya is pretty versatile as an ADC. Mm -hmm. right? She can go with a lot of uh, supports. There's always one character you forget. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And uh, the Jax is definitely going to be that one character for Ricky. So that's going to be a Ricky on the Jax in the top lane. So the TF is indeed mid. Uh, so that's going to be interesting to see how that one plays out. But here they have to pick the support on five. Uh... What do you think? I mean, we've seen Yanahela Blades has actually been pretty prevalent in the meta right now, but not all too played. An Ash could come out. A Poppy? Wait, hold on. A Poppy? Is this an Italy support? Is this a Poppy support? It could be a Poppy support, to be fair. You can it's block Kaisa's dash uh, yeah. on her ultimate. It's good for Vi. It's good for Aerie. It's good for Rakan. A Poppy support here, actually, a really good pick. I didn't expect it, but... It's not too bad. Um, I think it'll be a little bit of an unconventional lane, to say the least. And now NKU, as we saw through the bands, have been heavily protecting this top lane pick. And it is going to be switched on over. I thought they were going to lock in Garen there. Yeah. No spin the win this time. But I'm going to bring something with a little more brute force, and that is going to be that Olaf. Just the... Berserker style of that champion going to be the selection here this time by. Now, we know Saints, they're playing a little weird. To kind of say the least here with uh, at least the bot lane side of things. Up well, on the top actually, lane, Ricky, not so surprising. Found one of his characters at least. Yeah. And it's going to be the, one of the first times we're going to get to see Bakery Boy on Twisted Fate. Which, of course, a little bit more mage style considering... Well, it could be that, either AD or AP. Very, very true. But we do know that Bakery Boy, of course, loves those assassins. Love, loves a little Blanc, the Akali, and those kind of things. Yep. While TF is not necessarily an well, assassin, I mean, he kind of becomes a makeshift assassin considering he could basically teleport Gold card, auto-attack, 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 they're dead. <laughs> exactly. He's more of an assassin if he has a partner. Yes. Like, yes, eventually, once we get to late game, you might be able to get some solo picks. Well, I mean, but I don't think you're going to want to do that early. If you go AP, <laughs> like, once you get three kills and your Lich Bane, mm. yeah, you can maybe one-shot an ADC uh, with a blue card. If the ADC is really far behind, maximum, I don't know. You'd really have to pick him off at the right time. Definitely yeah. risk it. Yeah, <laughs> he might have to be 50 HP or something. Um, but, yeah, so... The, the TF pick actually makes a lot of sense there. It's good roam. You're just generally speaking going to be able to do a lot. And because the Silas was banned, you can't really like counter pick anymore. Um, so it, it's going to be interesting to see how that one's going to be played in the mid lane. The Jax in the top lane, of course, it's a pretty staple pick. Uh, he plays it a lot. And mm -hmm. just, I mean, going into Olaf. I don't see too many problems because Olaf needs to auto attack to keep Ragnarok up, right? True. So. The ultimate's basically useless in the lane, as long as Jax uses his helicopter. Yeah, you might not get stunned, but you're not going to auto-attack either. Exactly. So Ragnarok <laughs> only lasts three seconds. Yeah. And when that happens, well, you're kind of doomed because your ultimate's useless. Mm. Um, so from that standpoint, it's kind of not the best pick, but it's all, of course, going to be playing around the counterattack on Jax. Mm, you'd really have to time it properly to have it ready exactly for when the Saints fire off their utility. If you can manage to get through the stuns and then right as it's wearing or the counter strikes wearing off or any of the stuns are wearing off then the audio attacks work okay but you have to be really really on point to be able to pull that timing off yeah well the thing is ragnarok on olaf lasts for three seconds counter strike lasts a maximum of three seconds yeah, as soon as he pops it, you just pop it, right? Yeah, so, so like, he oh, pops God. it, you pop it, and I, right as his like first auto attack on you finishes. So as long as you keep on spinning, his right. Ragnarok ends before yours ends, right? Right. So from that Heck, you might still get the stun. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah so. so it's really interesting considering they protected that top, that top pick yeah. for so, so long. Which like says to me that at least... Maybe the player up in the top lane there for NKU doesn't necessarily have the biggest of champ pools. Maybe, yeah. Because, in theory, you had the opportunity to pick something that's way harder of a counter. You banned out a bunch of, like, rookie favorites. And then, heck, Ricky's even played the Olaf as well. So, I mean, like, it, 
I f- I'm going to be definitely looking at this top lane matchup because I'm kind of worried for the NQ top laner with uh, the vibes I'm getting from draft. Yeah, and the other thing, the poppy support. Okay, that I actually mm-hmm. love because they're the entire draft has dashes. Except for Olaf, the entire draft has dashes. You've got Vi, you've got um, right. Kai'Sa, you have Rakan, you have... Oh, who's the other one uh, in the mid lane? Uh, Aerie? Yep. Right? They all have dashes. So having that Poppy to just sit right next to her ADC and wait for somebody to dash onto her is perfect because all <laughs> you have to do is well, press W and what are they going to do? Exactly. Dash. Yeah, the only, the only one who can really get through that would be the Olaf themselves. But um, again, you have other counter... Or ways to counter that with other stuns and other yeah. counterattacks and whatnot. There's a lot of appeal. Now, taking a look at the mid lane one more time here, of course, it's going to be Bickery Boy on the Twisted Fate going up against. I'm trying to remember. Uh, uh, Dari, Dari. Yeah, but, Dari. Um, I feel like, at least personally, from outside looking in, this could be a relatively even, or at least one of the more even matchups compared to some of the other it's lanes not that too we've bad, saw. Yeah. But. I do like what the Saints did where, sure, they first picked it, but they I feel like they made sure, like, they didn't want to give Silas that ultimate, right? No. That would have no, been no, absolutely no. ridiculous. However, I think uh, NKU kind of opened it up for them because they banned Silas, um, I think, Red Band 1. Yep. So it's like, okay, don't have to worry about this anymore. That's like the number one threat. Okay, we can pick TF now yep. relatively safely. And interesting to see. Yeah, well, TF into Ari is not too bad. The only downside is that Ari has her passive to heal her in lane, right. whereas TF doesn't have much healing in lane. Uh, so, like, she can stay in the lane longer, but at the same time, TF doesn't really care because all he does after six is clear waves TP somewhere and get a kill. Right. So, yeah, yeah. Might get picked on a little bit early ish. Maybe. But it, there's nothing wrong with just sitting back and using the cards as necessary to uh, just last hit. Yeah, you don't really need to play to win lane. You just need to break even, and then you snowball bot lane. I mean, we've all seen it. TF hits level 6. All right, boys, let's dive bot. Yep. <laughs> oh, y'all are still level 3 over there or level 4 over there? Hey, how about a tower dive? <laughs> I, mean, well, I mean, it's a staple, you know? I mean, even without TF, people have been diving at 3 lately. I don't know if that's just a Saints thing or uh, No, or no, what. even <laughs> in high level. I mean, just everybody dives bot. It's kind of a staple now. You just you clear and then, oh, look at that. The enemy bot is pushed in. Yo, mid laner, you want to get a free kill? Yeah. All right. Cool, four man dive bot, level three. And then, well, what's the botling going to do? They're at level two, maybe three. And right. they're just kind of sitting there under their tower saying, oh, look at that. There's a Maokai there. There's a Rakan there. There's a Zaya there. And, <laughs> oh, look, there's an Aerie there. What am I supposed to do? Uh, the answer is die. Yeah, if you're, <laughs> your best hope there is the hope that they misplay the tower aggro, and then maybe you can at least trade something out, right? But yep. um, definitely going to be a tough one. Nonetheless, if we do see that coming out here, and there is a lot of enabling, heck, we're still very, very confused as to what the support is going to be like here. So we have, of course, either Poppy support or Nidalee support. Either of those characters could also play jungle. So yeah. that is going to be well. It could also just play. it could be a Jack support Poppy top Nidalee jungle. That is also possible. You're trolling me. <laughs> but, well, I mean, a Jack support isn't half bad because he counter strikes all the auto attacks and then just bonks the. I was going to say, I feel like this has to be a kill lane if you try that, though. Yeah, you go for kills. <laughs> yeah. You don't go for farming because you, you can't really last. But here, as we're hopping into the. And game, there's our answer. It is a poppy support. Uh, so, yeah, Nidalee is jungle, so it's the more standard draft here. Nidalee opting for the red uh, jungle item. Vi opting for the green one. So Vi going for more of a tanky build. Nidalee going for those one shots. Uh, those spears are probably going to hurt really early on. Oh yeah. Oh, this is going to be terrific. Uh, so here, hopping into the game, let's look at the runes. Lethal Tempo on Jax. Conqueror on Olaf. Pretty standard. Nearly going for Dark Harvest. Okay, so those spears, when they hit you, you're, 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 you don't have health anymore. TF actually opting for the... Um, not Lost Chapter. It is uh, Spellbook. So we're going to see a lot of summoners swapping around here. Okay. Uh, it's pretty good for security, although usually you would opt for... Like, I mean, personally, when I place... Oh, hold on here. Oh, we're going to have an immediate engagement, actually, here, right in the top side of the river. But there's the... Or sure enough, going to immediately get the counterattack. Any auto attacks coming through there onto Maddie is just going to get blocked away. So some good coverage there from Ricky. Could have been trouble, but not this time. 
Yeah, the Olaf does have the strongest level one in the game. Well, other than Soraka, but let's be honest, Soraka is rarely going to get to push her level one uh, as strongly as Olaf here. As we can see, the bot laner is already duking it out before the minions even reach the wave. Um, kind of making it a little bit harder. But yeah, a lot of aggressive trading is probably going to be what this bot lane is about. So will the top lane here as Ricky kind of has to play around um, those axes from Olaf. Because right. if that axe, he can get the reset, he can just chain that. Mm. And once he starts chaining those axes, that's how you die level one, right? Granted, you blow all your mana by trying that out as well, so you better be accurate with them. Yep, I, uh, I made that mistake once. <laughs> not making it again. <laughs> You learn real quick as we do see Ricky once again. What Susie hits level two, gonna give him the quick little uh, counter strike one, into two. the bonk on the on the noggin, but no counter uh -oh. attack possibly. A little bit of a chop up and down there. Sure enough, this is exactly what you're talking about, where these axes just keep on going oh and a fantastic God. play there from the top laner on the side of Northern Kentucky. Gonna win that quick early one v one with Ricky. Yeah, the top lane. Oh, and here we can see the Poppy doing exactly as she is supposed to, getting that W up just as the Rakan tries to engage, pinning him to the wall right afterwards, getting a big chunk of damage right onto him, getting that Zaya, keeping her safe. That's basically how the, the Poppy support works, right? Um, so from that standpoint, you get to do so much with a Poppy support when she's played um, like around her ADC. <laughs> and then the only trick is she doesn't get really tangy really fast. So she plays more as like a peel bot right. than an engage or anything like that. I mean, the ultimate's still the ultimate. Nobody likes Poppy ultimate, you know? Just, just get sent to Narnia real quick. Yeah, uh, let's just- Oh, talk. hang on. Ooh. Yeah, we got ourselves an engagement in the jungle here up in the red side. That is a three on two that the Saints are probably not going to want to go through. Big charm coming out as well. Cleve's gonna find a second kill of the game after taking care of Maddie. Bakery Boy and Ricky are here. Are they going to actually try and turn this one 2v3? They are gonna try Bakery Boy with the flash over into the Baron pit. Is going to be A-OK -okay for the time being. Lots of low health bars, but not enough damage. That's gonna be three for Cleve early in game one here. Oh, that's a fed Olaf. And that's oh. extremely terrifying. Oh my gosh. Oh, we might not be oh, done wait. yet here. <laughs> Gold card, get the stun, and okay, we at least get one back. Nicely done there from Bakery Boy to find that pick. Okay, so it's one to three. All three kills are on the Olaf. Yeah. That Olaf is going to get very fed very quickly. And if there's one thing that I have learned from playing top lane way too much, um, <laughs> it's definitely that a fed Olaf is a threat. A pause will actually come into effect here for just a little bit. Uh, maybe an internet connection problem or something, I'm not sure. Quick little hiccup, it looks like we're good. Yeah, uh, but yeah, that Fed Olaf already has steel caps and a longsword. That's gonna be an immense threat as here, they seem to be looking for the invade, getting that vision down, but they oh, can't really no. do much. Yeah, they got a bit off a little bit more than they could chew though. Biscetti, extremely low. Ice Alarm is gonna secure their first kill of the game. They're gonna add that kill on top of their two assists here so far. Northern Kentucky University, I might have been downplaying them, calling them the underdogs here, but that's a fantastic early game so far. Yeah, but let's not discount Saints too much. Their comp is a little bit more centered around scaling. Um, oh, that Kaisa will scale too. Oh no, Rock Boom. Oh. Extremely low. Okay. They, 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 they need to play it a little bit safe. Their champs really unlock themselves after level six here um, with the TF being able to roam. Right. But if they're that far behind, if they're too far behind, then they won't be able to enable that, right? The mid lane here is actually pretty close in terms of both farm and kills. So as long as that mid lane is not too far back. Oh, hold on here, it's an engage. Yeah, Cleave is gonna be possibly taken down here. Big Shield oh. actually is going to keep him alive. It's gonna be up to Maddie to maybe find a spear, but it, I think it might already be onto cooldown. So Cleave is gonna be able to get out of there pretty well unscathed. One more attempt. Oh. Okay, good thing he moves, but he's getting a little bit greedy with this back. Ricky and Maddie are gonna pursue him. Just make all of these minions just eat that tower. And in fact, is that TF? Bakery Boy shows up right at the right time. And that's exactly where you want that shutdown to go. Right onto Ricky's Jax. Yeah, 300 gold shutdown going straight to Jax. Gonna try and balance out that lane. The TF ult had to be like used there. So 
it's trade, right? You get that shutdown, but at the same time, TF ult is down, which means your bot lane now is in a little bit more of a uh, pickle, right? If they get into mm -hmm. a fight, TF can't roam that quickly. He can't TP straight there and say, all right, guys, don't worry, I'm here to help. Um, so from that standpoint, you kind of have to watch out how you play that one. The ball lane is going to have to play very safe until they can get um, a little bit more attack speed on that uh, Zaya. Because once Zaya gets her feathers out, and gets that lethal temple stack from those later mm -hmm. on the fight. She's a lot bigger of a threat than uh, Kaisa. Kaisa kind of being that assassin tries to take out the back line before the front line um, in those fights, taking the fights uh, back to front. So having a champion like that in your team means that you have to watch how you play here. So we can see there's an- Oh no. Baschetti gets absolutely caught out in the tri bush. Is going to be able to flash over the wall. Keeps himself safe. But let's be honest here. Northern Kentucky U are just all over the Saints jungle right now. Maddie was trying to get the red buff. Immediately running into another member of NKU. And just making the Saints life so extremely difficult. If NKU is playing this knowing that they need their lead and need it quickly. Because the Saints are going to scale. They are doing a damn good job right now. Yeah, and here in the top lane, there's a lot of fighting, but in the mid lane, it's even worse as the gold card will come out, land on the Rakan, but ugh, is it really working? Maddie taking a lot of damage, or trying to save Bakery Boy, but Bakery Boy is going to oh, fall man. there to the airy. Yikes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure, we got one, but then it just immediately got traded out here, so it's going to be two kills there on to Ice Alarm on the Ari. Going to be just sitting very very pretty there in that mid lane keeping pretty even as well with oh. that CS side of things Maddie thinking about the dive but I mean you're diving in 1v3 I would definitely not recommend no one 1v3 is never ideal uh, but they kind of just need a lead oh spear that's landing that's just annoying the my goodness <laughs> I mean that's the whole point of Nidalee you exactly sit back and play artillery mage for a while and then you say oh wait hold on I'm an assassin let me just swap to cougar form and one shot the ADC <laughs> Yeah, I'm still uh, traumatized from like season two league when Nidalee could build full AP and immediately just one shot an AD carry. As we do actually speak of our AD carries, dueling it out here in the bush next to the red side turret. Is there any backup though that is going to be Pisketti nearby? But I think the Kai'Sa is going to think twice and just go hide on her turret. Yeah, so that TF is AP. We're seeing that blasting one being picked up along with the crystal. Uh, oh, the charm landing in the mid lane though. Going to chunk them down to what? That's like 60% HP. Yep, yeah, good Yikes. combo. That's okay. a lot of damage. But yeah. yeah, other than that, the lanes are looking pretty tight. The gold is, I mean, it's 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 not that big of a difference. It's actually St. Clair sided here. Um, probably just due to plates from what I can tell. But wave control is probably going to be one of the most important parts here. When we're looking at the Saints, they need to play around. Oh, hold on, oh, TF playing yeah. out the ultimate. Boys, we're diving bot side. Yep, there Kaisa. it goes. That is going to be Rock Boom going to take care of the Kaisa immediately right off the board. But sure enough, that is going to be a trade. The tower is going to secure the one. And now it is going to end up being a three on three down the bot lane. I think they are not done just yet. Top lane going to continue to juke things out, but they're finally going to kind of subside here. But, um,. Saints tried to go for the dive. Sure, they got one. It was on the AD carry, to be fair, who was already having a hard time. But they get one right back. Yeah, and the one for one isn't ideal here as the ghost is popped by Olaf. Immediate flash. <laughs> well, it's because if you get hit once, you just, it combos, right? Exactly. One axe into another axe into a third axe and you're dead. That's how Olaf works, right? And you can't really run away because that slow is so big. Uh, but now, Oh, Ricky got hit by another one. Those axes hurt, man. Mm. Like, you wouldn't expect them to hurt that much given the fact that they're on a queue, but like, they really, really hurt at pretty much oh any my. level. Straight up, they're actually gonna duel it out, and Ricky is actually gonna have enough burst damage, and I guess that's the difference. You have the main DPS of an auto attacker, kind of, with the Olaf, versus the burst from Ricky's Jax, and the burst wins out this time by when you can't lifesteal. Yeah, the W from uh, Jax is kind of, uh, it, it hurts a little bit. Plus, I believe he has that uh, third auto attack on his Even uh, better than, yeah. Yeah. So he can just one, two on a minion. And then on three, he bonks with the W. He bonks with the Q. He bonks with the um, empowered passive and auto attack from his ultimate. That's a lot of bonking. 
and the Sheen, and then the, which is now a Trinity Force as well. So he just had so much burst damage front loaded in that one. So beautifully done there for Murky to time that attack right. Yep. So now we're looking, the top lane is actually Ricky sided. Uh, the Olaf is kind of falling behind right now. Mm -hmm. In the jungle, Maddie is behind in CS and probably just in gold in general here. He only has um, a Hextech alternator, but the Grubbies are going to go for North Kentucky U here. Maddie going to try and take out that ward, uh, clear up some vision for the Drake because, you know, you kind of want to cross map those objectives. Right. Maddie doesn't seem to be focusing on the dragon just right now. He's probably going to clear out his Krugs and then go to... To Here, drag. Here's the thing, though. Look at this difference in the bot lane, in terms of CS. If there's oh, any, God. if there's any like big difference right now, that is where the pain is coming from. It looks like. Yeah, that's uh, that's significant. How did I not see that? What is that? Uh, 10, 20. Yes. 50 CS gold lead. <laughs> yeah. You don't want that to happen. Oh, but hang on, down to the bot lane, it looks like Big Reboy is going to make a return trip here right onto the AD carry. They are going to get a bunch of burst damage down onto the Kai'Sa, but with all of them there, it's actually going to be the, the Ari from behind, Ice Alarm making their presence no, but immediately getting stunned up. Rock Boom finds one, Matty is going to fall as well, but it is not looking good here for NKU. Back at fourth, and Rock Boom is getting all the benefit from this one. Finds the triple, can they find the fourth? They are going to let the Vi live this time by, but net positive here for St. Clair after Rock Boom finds the triple. Yeah, one for three. We take those all day. 23,000 gold to 20,000. That's a 3k gold lead. There's the moment. And Here we yeah. go. Yep. The kills are seven to seven. So that's that's the that's the CS dip right there. Uh, coming into effect. We can kind of see that happening. If you're getting out CS, you're completely beaten pretty much. I mean, you can't really do much against that. Kills at least, they give shutdowns, but CS it's a lot harder to have someone get a shutdown in here. As we can see, Jax is level six, so it's a lot harder to take those fights against him as Olaf, right? So you can't really do much. Um, although the drag does seem to be, yeah, Dragon will be taken by Northern Kentucky. Maybe they gave up priority for those kills. <coughs> Yeah, Maddie is still there though. That Nidalee Spear is definitely a possibility. And with everybody else around, I'm surprised they aren't converging on this. Uh, Maddie, last chance? Nope, not quite gonna find it. Gonna end up letting that one go. But even though the Saints, like sure, got a bit of a leader scaling composition, and yet they got a bit of a gold lead, not going to opt for the 5v5 just yet, thinking that maybe if NKU does manage to actually play their, um, their cards right, it could have been still in their favor. Yep, and here as we can see, Ari kind of getting her uh, malignants up, so those ultimates are going to become basically be a dime a dozen. She's going to be able to use those anytime she wants. Uh, I think it goes down to like what 40 seconds at level 16, so it's 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 really nothing. Uh, Rift Herald will be going to the Saints here as it doesn't really seem to be contested. Olaf forced oh, to pop no. Ragnarok from a poppy. E. No way. Okay, got a little bit nervous, unfortunately, there for Cleave, and just using that utility so, so quickly, thinking that maybe there was a couple more players behind it, which there was not, unfortunately, there for him. So that's going to be rough next time this goes. And yeah, this just absolutely opens the door for Ricky to dive on in. You know there's going to be no CC to stop you, but you do have a Vi there to stop you, so we're going to trade one for one in the top lane. Yeah, well, uh, you know what? A one for one trade in the top lane is worth it. You'll take those. Usually. Oh, hang on, we're not done yet. It looks like right down in the mid lane. That is an absolutely exploded Rakan. And Ice Alarm could be in for a world of hurt too if they are not careful. Shelly gonna come on in and secure the kill here on this mid turret as well. Lots of things now. Everybody's kind of leveled up a little bit. This 15 minute mark, the Saints are going absolutely nuts and getting themselves a solid gold lead. Yep, that gold lead is getting bigger and bigger. Now it's at 4,000. <laughs> The recovery seems like they were, they, Northern Kentucky U was ahead for a little bit there. Mm -hmm. But then the Saints got a few good fights, got a few good dives, and now they're ahead. It's, it's gonna be really hard for Northern Kentucky to come back from this. I'm still so worried of what they're going to end up doing with this bot lane because this Kais is just going to tickle right now. Um, meanwhile, the uh, rock boom there on the, on the Zaya is just going to like, once those feathers are out, good gosh, once you pull those back, that is going to be 
yeah. like half health to basically everybody if it happens to hit, with maybe the exception of the Vi. And I don't know how they're going to deal with this one, especially since the Saya does have a little bit of invulnerability on that ultimate as well. So you just time it properly, you dodge the big threats, and you just go nuts. Yep, and I think those that Nalvary Quick Blades is going to be coming out very soon here as the Nailie gets engaged on. Okay. Holy smokes, she just pops! Okay, but this might not be the end of it. The Saints are actually converging in the top side of this river. Big stun there from Ricky. Does manage to find three, but it is going to be Buschetti. They're going to be the first one going down here. Cleave is going to find one, but Rockboom has people in his face. Going to pop the ultimate, but now the Ragnarok does come on through and does a bunch of damage onto Rockboom to the point where he could not auto-attack effectively. It is all up to Ricky and Bakery Boy to try and do this one. They converge right onto Ricky, and just like that, I was worried about the Saints team fight, even though they were ahead, and that is exactly why one pick absolutely turned the tables here. Fantastic fight for NKU. Yeah, that fight, although it's not over. They're all really low. Twisted Fate, oh, he doesn't have Flash. Never mind. I was going to say, if he has Flash, you could get another pick, but uh, not, a, not the blue card angle, unfortunately, here. He does have the Rod of Ages and the Lich Bane, uh, so that means that those gold cards are going to hurt uh, significantly. Uh, so will the blue cards, too. It's got some burst now. Yeah, just a little bit. Um, Nidalee also has her Lich Bane. Zaya on two items. Poppy getting that Locket of Iron Solaris. Going to be very, very good for that shielding. Um, honestly, the biggest threat that I see right now... So Kaiza has the Mon Immune almost up. She just needs to level it up now. Okay. Um, biggest threat that I'm seeing is the Vi Engage. Because, so Kaisa, can, uh, Kaisa, oh boy, Zaya can throw her feathers out uh, with an ultimate and uh -oh. ignore it, but... Hey, hate to cut you off, we got ourselves a big fight right in the mid lane where Rock Boom again is just going to get immediately popped, and this is exactly what Northern Kentucky University need to do. If they can keep finding these fights where it's not a fair fight, they are seeming to be exactly where they need to be, finding these picks. Yeah, Saints need to kind of play around that. The Vi ultimate is a big threat to Zaya, right? If she doesn't mm -hmm. have her ultimate, she can't throw her feathers out. She can't throw her feathers out and go invulnerable. Uh, that is a big problem because she's going to get locked down instantly by that Vi. Here, Ricky takes some pretty good trades, but he doesn't. He seems to just be tickling the, the Olaf. Say he's tankier than I remember, but now it looks like we're going towards the top side. And sure enough, Ricky, okay, no, I thought he was going to go in there for a second. <laughs> but uh, a little turret damage and get out of dodge. Yep, well, the experimental hexplate has been completed. So when Ragnarok is popped, extra movement speed, extra attack speed oh. on that Olaf is going to be terrifying. Um, I don't even know how this is going to play out because in terms of team fighting, I would say that Northern Kentucky does have the advantage in Italy being a little bit more of an assassin. Uh, she wants to get those picks mm -hmm. versus the Vi just making team fights just destructive so easy. yeah well i mean you literally just charge up your q dash in flash hit whoever the hell you want and then alt the adc and that your job's done yeah it's much easier to find value with the vi because like you're saying you charge up those cues you're bouncing somebody you're disrupting somebody meanwhile maddie like he needs the spear he needs to then be able to dive on top of that and find that pick which is definitely a much harder task yeah, plus the Rakan that's going to just completely disrupt anything. Zaya's going to have a lot of problems getting anywhere and dealing damage when everybody's diving on her. Mm -hmm. So that's why the Poppy's there, right? The, the Poppy's there for the peel. Right. But it's still going to be pretty hard as the Rakan here is getting caught. Yeah, kind of caught out in the side of NKU's jungle, but the reinforcements have arrived, but actually so has Ricky. But sure enough, at the end of the day here, that is going to be Steph Top, the support getting out safely. We are going to see the Destiny come on through. Where is that Twisted Fate? Not going to be in an aggressive position, just going to go up the top lane, which is actually, as soon as they see it, they dive back in towards their own jungle to get this team fight. Rockboom is going to secure the one, but the Ragnarok and rolls through Natty. So one for one trade once again, considering NKU was kind of the ones getting caught out there initially, they do manage to at least keep it even. Yup, and the gold lead is getting thinner for the Saints here. 11 to yeah, this 14. Is 38. Actually, uh, it's about a 1k gold lead. Yeah, a little more now that the turret went down, but yeah, yeah, exactly. Before, considering some of the other games we've seen so far in the nice Star League, uh, League of Legends scene, um, like this is probably the closest we've had all season. Yeah. Uh, this is very, very close, so yeah, we can kind of tell that both these teams are 2-0. Oh. 
Uh, they are mm -hmm. very close in skill. So you can see though, these towers are falling, those Void Grubs dealing a insane amounts of damage to the turret. And yeah. the Saints have the tower advantage. Tier one mid turret is still up. Uh, tier one bot turret is still up. The only tower that's fallen is the tier one top turret. Hmm. So from that standpoint, you're not that far behind um, as the Saints, even if you had a gold disadvantage because those towers give you so much priority. Like Dragon is so much harder to fight for Northern Kentucky U here because they don't have those turrets to protect them if they need to fall back. Right. But the Saints can literally walk up to their T1 and say, okay, cool, now you have to dive me instead of just kill me. Yeah, but granted, NKU has still been rather sneaky at getting these dragons with two already in the pocket. Now Buschetti is going to dive on in there, does find the Vi. Ice arrow, or Ice alarm rather, is right there as well. The Waiting for the ult to come in there from the Kai side. Sure enough, immediately going to blow up Maddie once again early on in this fight. This is a 3v5 until that TP comes down. Bakery Boy's going to find one at least to try and even things up. Ricky diving on through, trying to get onto that Kai side. There we go. There's a damage we're looking for. And Ice Alarm is going to fall as well. Rock Boom still going. There's the Ragnarok coming out there from Cleave. But he's going to just immediately get shredded down. But actually, they do manage to get two back. So after all of that, it's even again. Four for four. Four for four with a support and a mid laner left. <laughs> and neither of them have really big damage builds. And we've like not seen a fair 5v5 all, all uh, game so far. Like this nope. is just insane. Yeah, that team fight, to be fair, that team fight was very uh, unorthodox. Like it wasn't really for an objective. I guess they could have said, okay, yeah, we're playing for Baron. But even then it was literally just, they were looking at each other and they said, you know what? We're going to take a fight now. And then, yeah, okay, Jax TP comes in and everybody's fighting behind the Baron pit. Uh, but it's not like, when you pick a fight, you want those fights to be in front of objectives to take those objectives, right? Because you don't want to take the risk of losing that fight. Here, the fight, of course, comes out neutral, but the, ooh, in the jungle. Yeah, there, sure enough, that's where the poppy is going to shine. As soon as Levi tried to dash on out of there, gets um, pretty much blocked for the most part. But yeah, that last team fight, what that reminded me of is you ever square up to somebody at, the, at a hockey face-off and you're, you just kind of give them the look and you know as soon as that whistle drops, you're going to just drop the gloves. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what happened here, kind of in the in the jungle, so to speak. The jugglers just kind of look at each other. It's like, yeah, let's go, let's drop them. And, <laughs> drop the and gloves, then, let's go. And then everybody else, like a hockey match, starts scrumming after that. But sure enough, now right in the jungle of the NKU side, it is going to be a catch there onto the Rakan. Big shutdown going over Rakan into the pockets of Bakery Boy, and yeah, that kind of surprised me there as well. Look, it's 150 gold shutdown. Oh. Yeah, but it is not over. Rock Poop took a ton of damage there from Ice Alarm before this got really even started. There's the Poppy block trying to keep Rock Boom alive. So far, so good. Finally going to fall. This is finally the team fight that Saints were looking for. Was an absolute death ball, but we got ace. this one, and we finally get the ace. Finally get a dragon as well. All right, well, that dragon is going to be very useful. I mean, Mountain Drake, so, so good to get those extra resistances. Uh, makes it so that your ADC doesn't get one shot. I mean, to be fair, Mountain Drake or no Mountain Drake, Mountain Soul or no Mountain Soul, your ADC is still getting one shot. Yeah. But uh, maybe they won't get killed by a stray minion. <laughs> fair enough. I mean, yeah, you'll take any defense you can get, right? So, especially when you have everybody basically just so fixated on targeting you down. Yup. Well, I mean, to be fair, though, in that team fight, the Poppy... Um, the, the the steadfast presence was just so perfectly timed mm -hmm. there. I think she grounded like three, four people. I was gonna say I know it stopped Ice Alarm from going any further with the uh, the Ari dashes. Yeah, and it, it got the the Vi too, and I think maybe possibly it also got the Kaisa, or maybe it was the the Rakan. Oh, but we're talking about Poppy catching people. It's actually going to be Poppy getting caught as well as Rock Boom immediately eliminated just right under their own turret. Buschetti going to flash away. Cleave is there. They're going to try and then dive on top of them. Buschetti has gone down. Zanya is going to oh, keep Maddie no. alive for just a second's time, but that's not going to be for long. And that's a shutdown on top of that. As if Ice Alarm wasn't that's already there. having a fantastic game for themselves already. Gets the shutdown. Fantastic team fight again for NKU. And Baron is on the plate. All right, well, uh, that uh, <laughs> that mid tower is probably going to fall now. Is that I'd hope one, so. That tier one's been up for a little bit too long. Uh, the tier two might fall with the Baron buff too. But the thing is, for that team fight, 
wasn't the best. We had to re-engage. Um, Poppy just went back in for no... Yeah, no NKU reason. finally got the fight that they were looking for. Yeah. It was on their terms that time. For sure. Because the Poppy went back in, and then the Jax couldn't really follow up because mm -hmm. the health bars just weren't there, right? Yeah. And we didn't have the damage, so you just had the fly saying, okay, well, you know what? I mean, if, if you're going to re-engage, we'll take it, and then you have whatever happened there. Just absolute mayhem. But let's look at the items for a second here. Mm -hmm. We have a Jax on three items plus Merc Treads. Uh, so that's going to be nice. The Nidalee is on two with the... Um, with the Zhonya, so that's going to be really, really useful. The RFC coming out on Twisted Fate is going to be very useful for those gold cards. Um, mm -hmm. LDR is up for Zaya, so the Olaf is actually going to die, hopefully. So the L LDR, tran uh, translate that for me. Uh, Lord Dominic's Regard. Gotcha. And then uh, Poppy is on her second item, I believe. Uh, what item is that? Oh, Knight's Vow, actually. Oh, we could have some skirmishes happening down here in the bot lane, though. And they tried to jump Ricky, but it is actually not going to go into their favor at all. Fart Dog taken down immediately. But look at the damage. Oh as soon as the utility has gone, that's what let Cleave go nuts. And he's going to find Rock Boom next. Rock Boom going to try and get the damage from afar. There is reinforcements, but the pincer attack is an absolute possibility here for NKU, and if they manage to get this, that very well could be game that forces the Zanyas. The Saints have to engage at this point, or they're all just going to end up dying anyway. One goes down, oh. Rock Boom goes down, Bischetti is extremely low. Maddie might be able to hop away if he's lucky, but alone Nidalee to kind of stop this push. Good luck. Yeah, no, not with the Baron buff. Maddie's gonna have to. Oh, wait, hold on. The spear landed on the area. I mean, I'd love to be wrong. <laughs> yeah, okay, that tier one's going down. Uh, Nidalee might just poke with uh, with spears here. Those minions, of course, gonna block most of it. Gonna take the Baron recall here. Not gonna push too much. Honestly, they could have kept on pushing, getting that tier two. It was only a one v three, so usually you win those mainly against an Italy who really isn't tanky. Mm -hmm. So she like Italy couldn't really defend. Uh, poor Maddie, you're gonna have to take his jungle camps here. Uh, but he just he doesn't have much, right? Maddie doesn't have space to play around. He feels so limited this game. It's yeah. unusual. Well, uh, to be fair, when you're playing the Italy, you need to be ahead. It's like an Indies, right? You need to win that early game, or else, well, you're just a spear throwing mod, pretty much. Uh, and even EDs has more utility than Nidalee with the cocoon, right, with the mm -hmm. repel. And on Nidalee, it's if you're not ahead by, I don't know, 10 minutes, you're not having a good game. Uh, but here, as the dragon is coming up, wonder how this one's going to play out. The vision is being cleared. Khan getting that extra healing, uh, getting a little bit of poke. I mean, in order for this to go good for the Saints, they do kind of need the death ball around Baschetti and Ricky, right? So if anything happens in this moment, it could be absolutely deadly for the Saints. Destiny's going to come out probably more so for Vision, because as this all is happening, it's actually going to force NKU to kind of split their decision, because Ricky is just going to straight up uh, split push his top lane, and only Ice Alarm, or, yeah, Ice Alarm is there to try and defend. But if Ricky does manage to get the jump, that is going to be a dead Ari. Well, Ricky also has the TP of up and Very available. True. Ari also. So they kind of have to block that as well. We have an Oh, yeah. Sorry. Here we go. Baschetti's going to go low extremely quickly. And so does Rock Boom. Immediately taken away. Baschetti's going to fall as well. Before the five on five could even happen once again. The Saints just get absolutely obliterated. They're going to try and clean up here. But that is Cleves Olaf with that gigantic shield on top of it. The life steal is going to keep alive. But here comes the counter strike. Trying to slow him down. Can he get the ball? to take him down. No! It is going to be Cleve winning that one out slowly but surely. They get the team fight and Kiyu takes the dragon as well. They're going to take this bot turret and maybe take the game? We'll see. Uh, I mean, gold advantage is in their favor here. Their Saints are 3k gold down. That's a significant gold lead that's not in their favor. They might actually lose this one. Uh, Saints, have they even lost a game yet? That is a great question, actually. I don't think they have yet. Well, one way or the other, uh, I think this is going to be their first uh, their first loss. Looking at the gold, at least, they have. There is an angle to come back, but mm -hmm. it's all centered around Rock Boom dealing enough damage because mm -hmm. Rock Boom is their only damage. I mean, Ricky does have damage. Don't get me wrong, right? That Borg hurt. That Spear of Sojin hurts. That Triforce hurts. 
but it's nothing compared to what uh, Rogue can dish out, right? That's just it. We all have a bunch of small bursts here and there, but in terms of consistent damage, like you are saying, it's all... Rock Boomer, nothing. And let's be honest, he's been getting smoked immediately, like three seconds into the team fight. Not necessarily to a fault of his own, but well, just no, Northern no. Kentucky U managed to position themselves and use the right utility at the right time to lock him down. Yeah, well, I mean, that's kind of what the Vi does. That's exactly it, yeah. Press R, win team fight. It's that easy. Uh, <laughs> Sounds well, like my kind of champion. Press R on the ADC, win team fight. Oh, you mean I don't throw it at the tank? <laughs> no, don't <laughs> engage on the tank. And this is why I'm forever gold. But anyway, but yes. don't worry, I'm forever bronze. Hey, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it's uh, Vi is just gonna facilitate those team fights, and once the EDC just explodes, you can't really do much when you're the Saints. They they have nothing left, right? Uh, but here the split bush might be the win condition. Ari gonna take a lot uh -oh. of damage. Oh my God, the gold card in his pocket. Do you have gonna take out? Oh, actually, do you have to need to get part kill participation there? Oh, they're going to try to stop the ports. Can they bring them back? It's going to then be the engage here on the rock, but he's done so much damage. The kiting is actually immaculate this time. Bye! Ricky is doing so much damage in the base as well. He's got Bakery Boy alongside with him, just being an absolute stun bot, keeping everybody alive in the process. Ricky's got the damage. Bakery Boy's got the damage. The Saints coming in for highway oh. robbery. No way do they backdoor that. Okay. I mean, you know what? When behind? Deploy guerrilla tactics. The backdoor works. If the team fights weren't working, I guess you just don't team fight. <laughs> That's one way to do it. There you go. <laughs> what a concept. <laughs> hey, our team fights aren't the best. What should we do? How about we don't team fight? Yeah. Honestly, I wouldn't have expected that. I thought that the Saints were going to lose that one because, let's be honest, team fights are pretty much the entire game at this mm. level. You don't usually get to backdoor your opponent, but here they were like, yo, guys, um, the Ari's the only one with a TP, and there's nothing yeah, and they got else stopping us? Yeah, and it, like I was saying before, like Ice Alarm could try to defend, but as soon as Ricky actually gets the stun on her, she's going to get just blown up immediately. Yeah, and as lost. soon as that happened, you kind of seen in, in the mini-map a little bit, a little bit of a back and forth between the members of NKU, where they're just kind of hemming and hawing, like, what should we do? We're already at the bear, and we got it halfway killed. Do we keep taking this thing? And half the team hesitated, half the team immediately ran away. So now... The Olaf, which was probably one of their best opportunities to shut down that Jax, got locked up with Rock Boom and Baschetti, who was just uh, kiting. just kiting for their life, just trying not to die, not even to win the team fight, just no, don't no, no. die. Yeah. So make it so they just can't busy. Yeah, make it so they can't port away. And then the two on two, you have Bas or you had a Bakery Boy stun after stun, gold card, gold card, gold card, just letting Ricky go absolutely nuts on the turret and on the Nexus, and it was just. Perfect strategic play, considering the situation, and yep. beautifully executed. It was very well executed. The the set, the macro was immaculate. They're like, okay, well, they're on Baron. I'm at their tier three. <laughs> yeah. Ah, that Nexus is looking very tasty today. Yeah, I can blow up that Ari. <laughs> I, can, I can take it. And Baker was like, hey, I can join you just whenever, you know. Yeah. And it's like, okay, let's, yeah, let's do man this. And they absolutely crushed it. Oh, wow, yeah. No, that was a phenomenal game. Very, very good sense of macro from the Saints. But let's not discount Kentucky U. I was going to say, we still have to go to the drawing board after that. Yeah, because <laughs> let's be honest, if it wasn't for the back door, they lost that one. Mm -hmm. They won because they were able to back door. But, I mean, fool me once... Yeah, fool me twice isn't going to happen. Yeah, every team fight that happened when it was an actual 5-on-5, five five, for the most part, went to NKU. Yeah. And I say whenever a 5v5 happens, because there's very few of them, because NKU just kept finding 4 or 5-on-4s, five 5-on-3s. Five yep. And it's like, oh, uh, we just get the uh, TF to TP in or the, the uh, get Rick, uh, Ricky to TP in. Well, two of your players are already dead, so it's just a 3-on-5 into a 3-on-5. So Yeah. Getting like, those TPs at the brutal. right time is really hard to do. Absolutely. The problem is, and we can kind of see it, the Saints, when the Baron was starting to get taken, right? they were like, okay, well, in theory, we're supposed to team fight here, but our Jax is already on the sideline, and they're mm -hmm. not matching it, right? So 
because they want to force a team fight where they're at the advantage, well, we're just going to let our Jax do his thing. Yeah, they were right? so fixated on getting that team fight and going for the objective that it just kind of bit them a little bit. Granted, still very, very solid run there yeah. for NKU or for Northern Kentucky University, but just not this time. No, not this time, but maybe next time as we are going to head into game two soon. What are your predictions for game two? Do you think we're going to see like an Italy again? Or it's gone. It's gone. It's, yeah. it's gone. Done. <laughs> I mean, we we got the, the for the fans moment. Yeah. They, they didn't make the comment they wanted to pull out the Italy. But I'm going to say that uh, I think Maddie felt bored a little bit in that yeah. game. Because usually when we have these matchups and for any of our league games, Maddie is always just like the the playmaker of sorts. He may not necessarily be the one scoring the goals or uh, um, getting the kills, but he's always setting everybody up. Yeah. yeah With yeah. Nidalee, it you put him in a up. very awkward position where you don't have the ability to like do any stunning at all nope. to set anybody up. Your playmaking is essentially finding a spear, doing a little bit of damage to letting somebody else get the kill. And that is just not reliable in the slightest. There are so many other picks that we can see come out here for Sinclair, for Maddie in the jungle, that would be so much more valuable. But if this was a moment for the fans, okay, you got your pick. Yeah. But it's, uh, I think it might be time to take a switch. Yeah, now it's definitely the time to take a switch. What do you think he's going to be playing? I mean, we've got so many picks right now that are viable in the jungle. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could see like a Viego? Oh, I know Mathias would absolutely love that if we get uh, our one of our guys here's Mathias. For sure. Yeah, he would absolutely love to see the Viego come on out here this time by. But we do have the opportunity to maybe, like you were mentioning before, see the Elise come out. If you still want something with early aggression, you can still do that. Yeah. Uh, um, the Rel. The Rel is just so well. staple right now with the Void Grubs having shields. Mm -hmm. uh, which, speaking of, in the next patch, they're actually going to change that to health. Which is going to be interesting to see because the Rel is probably going to be kicked out of the jungle immediately. Because she won't have her shield break being as strong for the Void Grubs. Don't okay. get me wrong, she's still going to be there. But that shield break is going to be kind of useless on those Void Grubs. So she's probably going to get pushed out of the middle a little bit. Uh, so it might be the last we're going to see of the Rel. So you might see the Rel mains kind of want to get as many games as they can uh, in before the nerf. So, well, it's not a nerf. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a rework on the Void Grubs. But... Yeah. Nonetheless, it will nerf the rels. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting because we might see the rel. Honestly, the rel is such a stable pick in the jungle. Right? You, you get Bomby Cinder's first item, and I mean, what did, you just clear camps, and I mean, dive bot level three? I was like, Here's what I want specifically. Okay. If, if, if Maddie wants to play for the fans right now, mm -hmm. let's see the Lilia. The <laughs> Lilia? Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> we know you like that champion. To we like fair. you on that champion. <laughs> yes. Let's see it. <laughs> Lilia is such a fun champion because mm. it's like, Lilia makes you think, all right, the fight is now. And it's like, cute. Cute. <laughs> yeah. If, if for an FGC kind of terminology, like, if there's ever a character that can do uh, footsies. Yeah, that's do, footsies. That's, it's, Lilia does footsies. There we go. Well, it's kind of her thing, right? Yeah. Q's in to just get you with the true damage, and then she leaves. And then she's going to flash Q everyone, sleep. You hit the Zhonyas and let her team follow up, and you just need to sit back, relax, and let... Yeah, you got the best of both worlds. You are the playmaker, and you're also the killer at the same time. So, I mean... Yeah, exactly. Um, you could definitely do it. I'm getting a word here that we may have ourselves a substitution here for the Ooh, Saints as well. Okay. Trying to remember exactly what was this called, though, unfortunately. Ah, there we go. Thank you, production. So we are going to have, of course, a substitution this time by. It is going to be Boschetti getting pushed, as or not pushed aside, but um, taking a seat for game number two. Okay. Miracle is going to come on in for support in game Ooh, number okay, two. Miracle. So we kind of see Miracle play a couple of times throughout um, some nice games, and I believe in some C-Law games as well. What does that necessarily change in terms of champion style? <coughs> I'm not 100% sure. I cannot remember off the top of my head. I feel like the Nautilus or the Thresh might be more of a thing, though. I something a little bit more... more hooks, yeah. Something Blizz more Crank hook. might be something. Pike might be something. Uh, lo a lot of hook champions. Not really big <coughs> on Enchanters of Memory Serves. Right. Um, I will never see a Sona be played. It's been a while, eh? Uh, only... Sona just can't be picked. Come on, Riot. Rework, please. Oh. Well, okay, not a rework. The yeah. champion's fine, but, like, give her some hard CC at level three, and we're, we're fine. Oh, like, Sona, is that just a Seraphine skin? No! <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Don't rub it in. 
<laughs> hey, oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, but seriously though, um, enchanters are in the gutter, and then Sona just being completely useless is—it's a pain. But anyways, hey, I'll take th here. I'll as much as I like enchanters, I'll take this over seeing. Um, what was Art it? And See, meta? I was gonna say yes. Don't remind me of that. But uh, <laughs> I'll take that over seeing Lulu or um, Yumi Zeri. Oh god! Over okay, you know what? Yeah, fair again, enough. Fair enough. If you know what I'm saying. Well, okay, hear me <coughs> out, right? So Riot delete Yumi, um, <laughs> and then make it a, an Enchanter meta. You know what? Like Lulu Ophelios is annoying, but the amount of people that play Ophelios are like limited to the people that have PhDs. And there aren't now that many the people that have PhDs that play League of Legends. So other than like Guma Yusi and all the other pro ADCs, you're not going to see Aphelios. Uh, so you don't need to worry about Lulu too much. I mean, Lulu is still pretty strong. But mm -hmm. like, you don't need to worry that much. Like, you know, I want to see a Soraka. I want to see a Sona. I want to see team fights that just last three years because the Sona is pressing W on cooldown. Like, those are hilarious to see because it's like, oh my god, he's 1 HP, and then you just see his health bar go <laughs> <laughs> It's like, is that a All fire? Right. <laughs> All right, now here's the question. Chat, you can absolutely get along with this one as well, but you have to delete one of these characters, but okay. if you do, the other one gets buffed. Timo or Yumi? Delete Yumi, buff Timo. I'm honestly, I don't care. Sweeper. And worst case scenario, Umbral Glaive. What is Timo gonna do? He can't do anything. I have Umbral Glaive. I can clear your mushrooms, and then I'm just gonna sweeper them. That's a valid point. Very fair enough. To be fair, uh, unless he's going the hydrogen bomb Timo build. Now that thing is terrifying. <laughs> uh, have you seen that? Uh, what was it again? Sorry. The hydrogen bomb Timo build. <laughs> Yeah, that's what it's called. Open hybrid it Timo. Is, it is min maxed to deal the maximum DPS per mushroom while still having as much as many mushrooms as possible. All right, I tried that thing out. All right, so you know how like there's a there's like two lanes right leading up to the uh, to the drag pit in mm. the jungle, right? You have like you go around and then there's like two. I had mushrooms all along both lanes. And those mushrooms were able to take out, well, oh, I don't know, like a third of the ADC's health bar. No kidding. Per mushroom. <laughs> so an entire <coughs> line of mushrooms just one shot the enemy team <laughs> because they can't get to the objective. Like, that thing is terrifying. And when I say it's min maxed, it is min maxed no to kidding. deal maximum damage. Don't get me wrong, once they get on you, you deal no damage. I was gonna say, you're probably absolutely useless at well, a fight, yeah. but the fights never happen because you're already dead. I mean, you've taken All you have your is your blind and fights, but th there's not gonna be a fight. They can't get to it. <laughs> That but is yeah. definitely interesting, nonetheless. But game two, of course, is going to be right around the corner. Draft will be coming very, very shortly. But you had, uh, or you had asked me what I'm expecting to see change. And jungler is, or not the jungler, but the jungle pick is the main one there. How about yourself? If we did see um, top lane very protected in yes. that last draft. Do you expect something different? Or you see maybe a change in uh, somewhere else in the draft? Okay, so in the draft, top lane's probably going to be protected again, uh, just because usually if you're protecting either your weakest player or you're protecting a player that has a really small champion pool, um, which is a weakness inversely, um, yeah. usually you're going to want to do the same thing because you want to cover your bases mm. and then let your other players kind of just deal with whatever comes their way. Uh, but usually when that happens, you're not going to put your weakest quote-unquote player as last picked also, right? The Olaf was last picked last time. So maybe it's not a question of covering for a weak teammate, but more so Ricky is too big a threat, right? So if you're, they're scared of Ricky, then they're going to try and ban him out. Which they pretty much close, uh, almost did in yeah. the last game. That I think three out of the five at least went towards Ricky. Three out of five, yeah. So... When you're banning out that much, it goes to show that either they're really scared of Ricky or they don't know how to draft. I'm going to assume they're scared of Ricky here. Mm -hmm, which makes sense. Ricky is a really big threat. I mean, he's a lethality Darius. Uh, his Olaf is terrifying. His Jax is terrifying. Anything that you put into his hands is terrifying mm -hmm. because he knows how to build up those leads and snowball them. Um, so we might see him get banned out again, but on the... Opposite side, 
banning out a few of the champions from jungle is also a possibility um, if you want to maximize your team comp effectiveness, right? Because let's be honest, if there's a Vi, uh, you probably don't want to pick a Felios. Because right. the Aphelios isn't going to last very long, mm -hmm. well, unless he pulls 400 year stuff. But again, you need a PhD for that. Yes, of uh, course. <laughs> so yeah, like Vi shuts down ADCs, so that's why you see Vi being law or banned out very often. And when she's not banned, she gets picked. Here she was picked on one two, right? So mm -hmm. once that happens, you're kind of stuck. But here, moving on to the draft. Very area. Yeah. Yeah, let's see. And we're on the see. red side this time. Yes, we are on red side this time. So let's see how this one plays out. First draft. Oh, first band going to be Silas. Silas, again. once again. I mean, yeah, Bakery Boys played it a ton, but um, just immediately getting rid of it. The Gragas as well. Smolder and Fiora taking off the board as well. Yeah, Fiora makes sense. Smolder makes sense. Uh, Sin Zhao, we've seen this one before. I'm yeah, thinking. exact same three. Yeah, just they don't want to deal with those specifically. Uh, yeah, exact same three on both sides. The Ari gonna be picked up and again. I mean, the, uh, to be fair, the Ari did really well last game. Oh yeah, Ice so, Warm did fantastic on the Ari. I can see that one coming back. Let's see here on one, two, what do the Saints pick? We might see some more creativity or we TF5. might see something. Take the Vi away from them. Yeah, I say take maybe. the Vi away. That's a possibility um, because they will pick that on uh, three, four. But, uh, or you can... Or a Bakery Boy special. There we go, the LeBlanc. LeBlanc into Ari. All right. Assassin versus Assassin. You know That's what? That's going to get explosive. That's going to be interesting. Because the LeBlanc is, of course, kind of a terrifying pick. And if you have a LeBlanc, let's be honest, you're talking to your jungler, and you're saying, hey, um, ADC, unattended. I go kill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, hold my lane for a second, or do you want to join me? Yeah, and then you go and kill the unattended ADC under the tower. Well, I mean, let's be honest, it's attended by a support, so it's basically unattended. Uh, the Kai'Sa going to be picked up this time by the Saints. Okay, the Vi insta-locked, but the Vi against Kai'Sa isn't that bad. But to be fair, Kai'Sa has... It's better than, I think, the the Zaya instance here. Yeah, for Where you sure. have one ability as your, uh, your saving grace, and if it's already blown, well, good luck. And I hate this pick from NKU, Draven. to be completely free. I love Draven. I hate this pick. Yeah. Draven is kind of a pain in the butt to play up against. I mean, he's... he's... The thing is, right, if he doesn't get the first kill in that bot lane, there it is. Hey, there we go. All right. It's the not other... the Lilia, but it is going to be the Elise, so some heavy aggression planned early. Wait, hold on. If we get the Jace, that means we got all shapeshifters, other than Nar. Thoughts? Hey. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, if, but here... If the team is uh, looking to, uh, I guess, throw me a bone, can we get Jace and Kane for the next two picks, please? Jace and Kane? <laughs> Wait, hold on. So where's the Elise going? Mid lane, screw it. <laughs> LeBlanc <laughs> ADC. Lane, AD. Well, I mean, I've LeBlanc played, support. <laughs> I've played AD's top before. It's not that bad. That used to actually be a thing for a while. Yeah, she has a percentage max health damage on her human form queue, so it's not too bad. The Jax can be banned out. The Renekton can be banned out here. Uh, so we're kind of seeing. Oh, the Gwen? Okay, the Gwen Just goes away. Just getting rid of too. all these top picks. Okay, the. Uh, Makes sense to ban the Gwen, to be honest. If you're going to ban Fiora, banning Gwen is usually going to be your next ban. Just because Fiora and Gwen are literally two sides of the same coin, the only difference is one is AP, one is AD. That's, that's pretty much all. They're the same. And they took the Olaf away from Cleave. So if that oh, was no. the plan, it's, it's off the now. table now. What else is in your champion pool? And let's remember that with the ADs, right? ADs always paths the same way. Most of the time. Okay. Which means she always ganks top level three. Yeah, get the Olaf head so nice and quick. They need to get some champion that isn't going to be too scared of the EDs. Because a Garen? A Garen? I mean, they hovered it in game number one. It is going to get locked in this time by. Unusual. But Garen is locked in. To be fair, Garen isn't too bad into Olaf. Because if he takes the Ignite, then he can anti heal Olaf. Which True. means his passive isn't as strong. And the stronger Olaf's passive gets, it's lower health he is, right? Mm. So, Garen, who deals percentage missing you health got the damage execute, on yeah. the alts, right? Just snaps him away. 
doesn't have to worry about that healing on the Olaf. The Nautilus is going to be picked up to support the Draven. Honestly, Draven Nautilus, pretty standard pick. The only thing I could say that does more is Draven Pike. Right. Um, but Pike isn't the best. You know, he's kind of squishy. The Relic going to be picked up, though, as a support. Unless it's Ines support. Um, but I would rather doubt it, although I have played it a little bit. Ines support isn't that bad, actually. Yeah. Uh, but the Cocoon... You basically get to say no you don't whenever you repel. Yeah. Uh, you have good damage. You steal all your ADC's kills. That wasn't me at all. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> now, before we do end up throwing it to a quick break before game number two here, I did say that I absolutely hated the Draven pick. Now, again, I hate, or not that I hate Draven. I love Draven. Draven's a fantastic um, character. It's League of Draven, and I'm all for it. But, but what lane got absolutely dumpstered in game one? But so you're gonna all in on Draven with the team to be that fair, got out CS'd. If big if, but if you get a kill early, you can snowball that. And maybe that's the angle that they're looking for. They're saying, okay, you know what? We might get CS diffed, but if we can get a kill early on and might snowball the Draven, it. we can make up for it, right? Because Draven, he multiplies like what, 2.5 times? The, uh, his stacks right. in terms of gold plus 40 base. So like that's a lot of gold that he gets on kill. Plus he usually goes collector first time so that's an extra 25 gold on top of that. He can get his IE at like 10 minutes and that can just happen. Yeah, that's... <laughs> it's a big gambit in a lane that unfortunately did not prove itself in game no. number one. But of course, we're going to have game number two right around the corner. We are going to throw this to a very, very quick break. Hit the bathroom while you can, because with so many high damage characters coming up in this next game, you're not going to want to miss it. It's going to be explosive.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to game two. Saints leading 1-0 against NKU. We're going to be seeing how they play this one out. Yeah, so this one is going to be very much different compared to what we saw in game number one with a couple more different picks. And then one thing again that I'm worried about is that bot lane as well as the top lane. Garen is definitely an odd pick. And then Draven, to me, is a... Very, very confident pick as we do see the Saints moving as a unit here for the most part. Maybe looking for some early uh, early shenanigans. Yeah, maybe looking for the early game invade here with that uh, with the Olaf early game, right? Just so strong at that level, the level one. Um, the LeBlanc here in the mid lane is going to be terrifying. So will the Airy. So it's going to be interesting to see how those two duel it out. See who comes out on top. Of course, LeBlanc, uh, once level three is hit, we might see a dive, of course, coming out on that bot lane. Because, well, I mean, is it really a game of League of Legends if you're not diving bot lane at before level six, right? Even more so, too, because since you have Maddie on Elise this time by, who basically has six abilities at level three. And a repel. And the, has the repel. Is basically uh, she is one the of queen the, of tower diving. She is absolutely the queen of tower diving, being able to just drop turret aggro by repelling up to the skies. So it's a good setup, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> speaking of tower diving, I had the fun experience of going up against Trindamir in the top lane as it is, and he okay. was trying to tower dive me constantly, but it wasn't working. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> because I could repel. <laughs> I was just trying to explain to him, like, yeah, I can go up in the rafters, by the way. <coughs> he, he didn't seem to understand the concept of me being invulnerable, so that was a, a really fun game. Uh, but no, Elise top does not work right now, unfortunately. I, I won that game, but I went on like a seven game losing streak. It doesn't work, but here, Saints getting level two. Yep, immediately off of that level two, gonna dive on through here, but it is onto the support, which did allow for um, Big W there on the Draven to get some decent axe shots on to the support of Miracle. So, some decent damage back and forth. Nobody really too threatened right now, but um, Saints tried to make their presence known at level two, didn't quite work. Yeah, well, I mean, to be fair, those Draven Axes just hurt Brutal. so much at level one that you can't, like, ignore them, right? They're, they're there. Even if he's level one and you're level two, those extra two abilities that you have on them isn't worth that much in the face of Draven's Axes. And here, Garen is actually zoning off Ricky a little bit. Ricky forced to farm with his axes oh, in hang the on. bot lane. Yeah, we got the big engage down in the bot lane, though. The stuns are lining up here. Fart Dog nearly going down. It is going to be Rock Poop securing the first one here. Just a second, the repel up to the skies. Now going to probably drop on to Seth. Nope, not going to be the case. Maddie's actually extremely low. Big W looks for the damage, was looking for the stacks, and they're going to be looking at nothing but gray screen. That's going to be Rock Boom with the double. All right, well, time for uh, five zeals and Moby Boots. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, is it really a Draven main if they don't do that? I feel like you've been scarred one too many times. Who hurts you? <laughs> uh, Draven players. <laughs> And Maddie's making a return trip now down into the mid lane. Bakery Boy is there as well. Root is going to make contact. Big damage, and there is the Q. He's got that little extra execute on top of it. And Ice Alarm, who had such a fantastic game number one, is going to get shut down early with the big kill over to Elise. Yeah, well, that is it is. And surprisingly enough, she actually pathed bot side this time. I was honestly expecting her to path top. That's usually where Elise uh, paths here. But of course, I was referring to solo Q, so I guess the pro play it's a little bit different. Uh, here, of course, they're kind of getting those areas. Uh -oh. And, oh, God, yep. Ricky's having a Garen moment right there. That is definitely a Garen moment. One more chop to just seal the deal. Cleave for the second game in a row is going to get the better of Ricky up in that top lane. But again, if this is anything like sort of deja vu compared to last game, just give Ricky a couple levels. He'll be right back up there. Yeah, well, once you start diving people uh, with ADs, you, you can pretty much get anybody. The ADs is 1-0-2 right now with Magic Pen Boots already on that inventory slot. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to be seeing a lot of damage coming out from the ADs. We're probably also going to be seeing the LeBlanc start to roam a lot more. As here, Ricky might want to go for the re-engage onto the... Uh, He's not Aaron. level 6. He doesn't need to be. He has a strong early game, but maybe... Yeah, gonna duel things out. Looks like just gonna, the Cleave's gonna spin the their way out of there. Good save to see, at least. They were looking around mid for maybe something, but nothing as of yet. 
Yeah, no, not much just yet, but oh, the Vi going for the gank onto Ricky. Can Ricky find one? Yeah, Cleave is so low, but the tower shot is going to be there. But it can't get the same time in the mid lane. So I think that Zeftop looking to try and make a roam towards mid lane does get caught. That is going to be the second kill of the game for Maddie on the Elise. Yeah. Maddie with a 150 gold shutdown. So does Rock Boom. As here, he's oh still boy. not done. <laughs> Immediately down. This Drave is not going to get time for anything. This spider is hungry. That's three kills now for Maddie. Yeah, well, uh, I think this Draven might become an arachnophobe soon. Uh, <laughs> yes. You're no, no kidding, eh? I mean, that's kind of what Elise does, right? She's a really early game champion, but when she gets those few kills uh you're, you're you're not playing the game that's a 3-0 and 2 elise and all she has is magic pen boots too and the first dragon should be going to the saints here yeah because the saints have been able to get such a fantastic start and they must have noticed too that uh fire dog was off at the void grubs there's no jungler down that bot side this is going to be a very very quick and easy drake and they're going to pick that up very nicely yeah mountain drake as well so the saints here are probably going to be uh <laughs> I think they're gonna clean this game up really, really quickly to make sure that the Elise doesn't fall off. Or, alternatively, uh, they're gonna fumble the bag and can Northern Kentucky U is gonna get a huge lead afterwards. But, the Saints would need to fumble the bag for that. Here's the thing, like even if like the Elise falls off, by the time that's going to be a, a part where Maddie's not doing as much um, like magic damage, as much burst damage, Bakery's boy's gonna make up for it. He'll have yeah. the, the damage anyway there with the LeBlanc. Come like 11 or level 11, 11 or 12 or so. Like by that point, Bakery boy can just kind of do the bursting by himself. Maddie's just kind of there for the support at that point. In theory, right? Well, yeah, those assassins, uh, or those well, magic damage assassins, other than Akali, because Akali is Akali, she scales very well. Uh, usually, the AP assassins, or most assassins, don't really scale well. Uh, mm -hmm. The LeBlanc, the uh, ADs. But, on the flip side, they do have the uh, the ability to be kind of stun or root bots. As here in the jungle. Exhibit A! <laughs> yeah. Uh... <laughs> oh, they're not stopping either. Maddie on hot pursuit of Ice Arrow, who does have the ult available if things do go south. Takes a lot of damage for their trouble. It's gonna get out this time by though. Yup, that is uh, that is not a good situation for Northern Kentucky U here. They're in a bit, okay, in a lot of trouble. I mean, the gold difference is significant. That's 3,000 golds at seven, eight minutes. Uh, plus, they're down one dragon. Ah. Oh my. Oh no. Okay, I thought Big Boy was going to go for it. The uh, yeah, ult was I not thought available. that was going to be a one shot. Yeah, no ult available. And now, Maddie does manage to find a couple members of it. NKU in the jungle. Big Boy going to take care of Fart Dog. This Vi has just had absolutely no impact so far compared to game number one. And just like that, now this is going to be Bakery Boy getting two kills on the board, jump starting their economy as well. And if there is something that can go wrong here for NKU, it feels like it's basically happened. Yeah, I mean they're they're they're, good. they're definitely gonna be arachnophobes after this because uh, <laughs> Maddie is 4-0 and four. That was the last thing we basically needed. There was no kill on the top lane yet. Ricky in the life steal gonna outlive that execute by just a thread and manages to pull that one off. Yeah, the worst part is if Garen would have <coughs> ulted just a little teensy bit later, he would have won that fight. That's but he panic ulted. That is so sad. Uh, Alexa played Esposito. Yeah, but yeah, to be fair, Maddie's looking uh, really good right now. All he needs is uh, four deaths and he would have a perfect line for Jin. But here he's playing <laughs> these, so he doesn't need to die four times. 4-0 uh, oh and 4, definitely <laughs> looking terrifying. Uh, Olaf, 2-2 two, two and 0. Oh. I mean, that's a pretty good scoreline considering he's in the top lane and he got uh, ganked a few times here. The ADC 2-0 oh, and 1 still hasn't changed from the time from those ganks, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the mid lane, of course, being absolutely terrifying. It's 2-10, to 10, just yeah. generally speaking. 
weekend. That's, not a good situation. <laughs> yeah, compared to game number one, it was an Oh, God. Oh, this isn't it done, isn't it? The Draven is going to get immediately locked up once again. Just absolutely take it down. They still managed to pass the kill, the rock boom on top of that. That's going to be the TP in, but oh, Ice Alarm no. immediately just gets chugged for half their health instantly. instantly. Yeah, you're going to want to mulligan on that one. Immediately taken down. Oh, NKU no. is falling apart. Yeah. Absolutely brutal. See, this is the time where you start your TP and you wish you had Zonyos. Because you yes. don't want a TP there. He went for the TP to try and save his Draven. And it's like, TP, I'm going to save my... Oh, <coughs> wait, where'd the Draven go? <laughs> oh, no, the I'm here, I'm helping. Oh, God. <laughs> well, I guess I'm next. And, uh, yeah, I mean, now what? 4-0 and 6. 3-0 Three zero and four, two two and zero, oh, and the Rel with eight assists and nothing else. Beautiful. Wait, that's an Eclipse Kaisa. What? All right, translate to me. What's this mean? Uh, this is an AP Kaisa. So, okay. so as if we didn't have enough burst damage. <laughs> yeah, because so here's the thing, right? Kaisa, her W deals more damage. It scales better off of AD than AP. Right. Okay. That's why she usually builds Monomune, even though she's building AP. But Eclipse now doesn't have any lethality. I have the bigger brain for that in just a moment's time here, because it does look like Miracle Day get picked out here. Dredge line coming out here from the Nautilus as well. But the Saints are so far ahead, it's just taking so much time to actually even get the kill onto this one. The reinforcements have arrived. Arachnophobes run away. Here comes Maddie once again. Stun going to be locked on in, and there's all the burst damage. And sure, you got one, but for what cost? But at least there's going to be one little trade up in the top lane there. Cleave going to secure that one. Okay, so that well, what was that? A three for one? Three for two, max, I think? Three for one, technically, I believe, because I think we're... He... Miracle did fall, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so three for two. Yeah, so not too bad. The Saints still coming out on top of that one. But as I was saying about the Kai'Sa here, uh, so Eclipse now only has Ability Haste and AD as the stats, and it gives a shield uh, if you land two abilities or two attacks on an opponent, right? Mm -hmm. So... That just, it's like a monomune at the end of the day, right? Okay. So it just helps that W scaling so much better. And as we can see here, the blasting wand is coming out. So we might see, I mean, unless you know an item that builds blasting wand, that blasting wand longsword. Um, but yeah, we're probably going to be seeing here a Ludens, um, or not a Ludens, a, um, a, what was it? Not a national, um, I mean, the National Tooth is a possibility, of course, with the mm -hmm. extra attack speed plus the upgrade, but it was, um, Cosmic Drive is a possibility, but it, oh my god, I always forget the name of the items at the right moment, or the wrong moment. Uh, oh wow, there's a little bit of a skirmish on the top one here. Yeah, I'm gonna do a little bit back and forth, and it looks like the pain train is just gonna keep on trucking along here for a fart dog, and can't even farm in their own jungle. Rock Boom gonna quickly pick that one up. Ice Alarm coming in for the assistance by just basically donating three quarters of their health bar and moving aside. As we see, the Saints have just absolutely run away with those this one since uh, the get go. Yeah. What was the, you know, the item? Maybe it is a Ludens, but the Ludens doesn't build a uh, blasting one if it reserves. Uh, oh. But yeah, ooh, there's a Magi's on LeBlanc. Someone's back. feeling confident, and I yeah. do not blame them. Uh, to be fair, when you're 5 0 and 4, yeah, okay, you can get a little cocky. It's like buying a hubris, you know? Just, you can just kind of do it. Uh, you do it because you can. Yeah. I mean, personally, I hate items that don't reward you or like that 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 punish you for dying um mm -hmm. probably because i play in the top lane and dying is kind of half lane <coughs> but as i yeah. say that sounds like a skill issue but anyway down up it in, is. or rather up in the top lane and cleave i thought was just going to get ballsy there for just a second but no just defense the turret and moves on yup uh but yeah see the thing is so hubris right at least it doesn't punish you. It, it gives you a mm -hmm. reward for getting a kill, but it doesn't punish you, which is why sometimes I build it, but it's only when I play like Congress and stuff. It's <laughs> gonna keep kind of trading up in the top lane here for the time being, but one thing that was pointed out actually 
from production. They want to mention that uh, the kill participation right now for Miracle is absolutely on point of the 16 kills. It's been a part of 12 of them. But now, Fartok's actually going to choose to engage. Yes, you got onto Rock Boom, but guess what? He's actually fed this time, but he's got plenty of shields to deal with your dive. So the rest of the Saints are going to charge on through. And one more shot there from Rock Boom. It's going to get the seven or seventh elimination of the game. The Saints just keep on wrecking through the squad right now. Yeah, 419 at 14 minutes. That's 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 more than a kill per minute. That's that's pretty insane. Um, so if it was me, I'd say, oh, okay, yeah, so it is a Nash's Tooth coming out. Pardon me, I was wrong. Um, so the Nash's Tooth is coming out for the AP Kaisa. The thing is, usually you wouldn't build a Nash's Tooth because it doesn't give you... It used to give you the Evo on your W instantly rate because it gave 100 AP, but now okay. it gives 90. So it's kind of less preferable, but oh my god. Yeah, so the Ragnarok was popped. I thought Ricky was going to opt ghost. to go for the 1v1. It's going to opt to run away this time by instead, though. Considering the ultimate was in the pocket of Cleave, probably a good choice. Yeah, here the Ginsu's might be an option uh, to get that at level up, of course, for the AP Kaisa. Um, but it's going to be kind oh, of hello. to see. Oh, God, tower dive. Oh, you thought you were safe under your tower. Not today. Immediate <laughs> deletion. Double kill for Rock. Okay, listen. Safe <laughs> under tower and ADC are not two words that you can put in the same sentence. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> you are not safe under your turret if you're playing an ADC. Hell, if you're playing a marksman, you're not safe under your turret. Oh, if you're I'm, playing anybody, you're not safe under your over. turret. This isn't over. It isn't over at all. As soon as you jump on that, he just repels to the skies, gets out of dodge. Ricky is directly into the back line. Fart Dog immediately eliminated. Ice Alarm is gone as well. And good night, Cleave. Did you have any damage? Barely. You didn't even get somebody to half. Yikes! Well, maybe Maddie could. Be it was close. It was close. Health. <laughs> maybe, uh, but yeah. I mean, at this point, the Saints are just playing with their food. Jeez. They're just able to answer everything that happens, and a lot they're of it is just because they're so far ahead. Again, it all starts with like the tank line, where you have both Maddie and um, Miracle with just such fantastic uh -oh. kill participation. And then Ricky, now that he's back online, he can just do what he pleases, essentially. It may not be Mundo, but it doesn't mean he just shreds anybody. Miracle there with the save, not quite going to happen. He might actually be in a little bit of a trouble now this time by. Rock Boom is here, though. Let's watch those health bars go boom, as that is going to be now Maddie. There's the execute coming on through. Gets up to the skies to just get out of dodge for just a second. Still oh. alive. The execute from Cleave is going to come in clutch, though. But now Bakery Boy, the assassins here, the cleanup. And there goes the last two. Rock Boom with another double getting his 12th unanswered elimination here no deaths in his pocket yeah but there have been shutdowns that have been handed maddie has been shut down the shutdown went to the garen uh so did ricky so it's a lot of gold in their pocket oh hold on the fox is about to die yeah one more time one more axe and you are toast but not gonna be the case this time by Okay. Well, you know what? Maybe they're safe. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, this ain't over. Bakery boy in the back line thinks that you, or you made it thought that you were the one getting the jump on us. Not this time. Miracle with a shred of health is going to live barely once again. The only thing shut or the only shutdowns that really matter at this point is your computer. This game's over. Uh, yeah, I mean, pretty much. The Saints are down. <coughs> Six to 31. Oh, yeah, there goes the Garen. Uh, you can't do anything. Yeah, there's just... At all. They're too far ahead for anything to happen now. And it's not like this team, like, gets completely destroyed by outscaling either. There's well, no, enough consist... There's enough consistent damage here. And the one who scales, the Kaisa, like you said, is just absolutely so far ahead. Like, yeah. oh my goodness. There's a good mix of scaling and early game. The Elise, the LeBlanc giving you that early game that you need and then the Olaf and the Kai'Sa giving you that late game advantage. But hold on here, the Kai'Sa got locked down. Okay, sure, that's gonna be Bakery Boy getting hooked, but it does not matter. Immediately gonna distortion their way out of dodge. And 
again, Wait. just teasing Northern Kentucky University at this point here. You thought you had a pick? Not quite. I'm out of here. Oh, that was the LeBlanc. I yeah. thought it was the Kaisa. I was like, oh, the Kaisa. Okay. <laughs> As if this guy hasn't had enough trouble already. <laughs> Kaisa, rock boop from downtown. Okay, just going to dive on through. <laughs> we can give some credit to Big W here. He did not buy five seals in Moby Boop. <laughs> At least there's that. At least there's that. I mean, what is he? Oh, and eight. I feel so bad. Oh, no. And Maddie took Shelly for a ride as well. That's two turrets, two inhibitors now. Going to be down as well. Holy smokes. Big damage coming through from the Saints. Yeah, that's probably going to lead into Baron. The Saints are just plowing through NKU here. There's nothing they can do. Like, I, I last game was so close, and now this? Are, are, are these the same Saints? I definitely have my thoughts, but we'll discuss that in the post game as we go along through here. But just, yeah, overall, Northern Kentucky University, they're just broke. Broke mentally, broke gold-wise. They don't have the firepower in, in their pockets to make something happen. Even if they do get a pick, they have to worry about getting like turned on 1v3. And now it's Miracle. This is the tank line that they're going up against immediately. And you've got Ricky right there as well. That is going to be the alt on to Bakery Boy, but the clone comes out and takes a little bit of damage damage to keep them alive. Ricky and the rest of the Saints are going to slowly but surely just tear through this squad, but leaving you? no one but Cleve left to play. Uh, Cleve's not going to last much longer if uh, the Saints have their say in it because they are about to spontaneously combust. Although I'm pretty sure the Nexus Towers are going to do that already. <laughs> Rockman <laughs> taking aggro. Okay. Yeah, these turrets are going to combust more or quicker than somebody playing the brown noise. This is going to be an absolute stomping. The players are dropping. The players are disconnecting. The shutdown of the game complete as the Saints take a nice quick one, 21 minutes in. Yeah, 16, 0, and 8, 11, 0, and 16. That was the score line for the Kaisa and the LeBlanc. Uh, um, yeah, I think they lost that one. <laughs> <coughs> that just, just by a sliver. Uh, that was a stomp. Compared to last game, it was not the same whatsoever. There was a few factors, of course. Yeah, I said I had a couple of, of thoughts on that one. And the first one is... Um, Maddie being able to actually like play, play the, the kind <laughs> play the kind of style that he likes. Yeah. We know that he loves these playmaking champions and playing the Nidalee in game number one really did limit him to strictly only like an assassin Damage, role. Yeah. And that was a little bit tough there. So a lot of these team fights that the Saints wanted to end up doing in the end, they would have had to have like chip somebody down early and then do it. And it just didn't happen that they way. They just didn't have the CC. No, not at all. And it was just a night and day difference. Once you get Maddie somebody with this like the ability to make those plays, as well as being able to just like make easy tower dives as well, it was just a night and day difference. That's no this game to me, it snowballed from draft. We didn't even yeah. load into the game yet and it was already snowballing. For sure. I mean, Maddie on that Elise is terrifying. And I mean, Elise isn't a pig that you see that often, right? Because she's, first of all, very hard to master, right? Getting Elise down is like getting in, is, it's like understanding Jace, it's like understanding Nidalee. You have mm -hmm. an extra three abilities that you need to learn to master. And not only that, you need to learn when to use which ability perfectly. It's easy to fumble, too. Right? Yeah, because you die once, and let me tell you, you die once on like Elise or Nidalee, you're done. Your game is over. You are an early game champion. I mean, Nidalee, her late game is literally throw spears and hope somebody dies because of it. Yeah, at least you have utility as Elise in a worst case scenario. Yeah, Elise, you're a stun bot. Jace is the only shapeshifter that has a strong early game and a strong late game, and that's because he gets carried by his AD ratios. I mean, <laughs> who in the world puts a 100% AD ratio on a an ability that deals 23% max health damage. 300 years, remember, or 200 years. I mean, but, yeah. like, usually these things scales with like, oh, I don't know, 0.03% AD. <coughs> I don't know. 
But yeah, with those shapeshifters, that early game is so essential. You could see Maddie was playing so well mm -hmm. on that Elise, getting the utility out, and I mean, snowballing the game out of control. Yeah, and you had mentioned you thought that uh, Maddie would end up just traveling up top first, but they actually did make the trip down to bot lane first, basically shutting down the hopes of the bot lane pretty well instantaneously and just got Rock Boom in a position alongside Miracle, where they were just an absolute like tanky monster that was getting involved in basically every kill in the game. And then Rock Boom eventually was just an absolute assassin. <laughs> just yeah. able mean, to destroy That's what LeBlanc so does. <laughs> and but, then uh, even Bakery Boy too, absolutely. We'll give him the shout out as well. Yeah. But he did exactly as he needs to do. He was like holding his own in mid lane. As soon as the jungler comes though, or anytime the roam, was blowing up people immediately. So sure, the Elise damage fall, fell off. But you saw the magic damage from Bakery Boy. And so many times, especially near the end game, how many times do we see him diving over the trees, under the turrets, and just making poor I'm Big W's uh, Draven just have an absolute living hell that game? You can't, pl as Draven, if you're behind, you're behind. Okay, as Draven, if you break even, <laughs> you're behind. So if you're behind as Draven, what are you? You're, <laughs> you, you aren't behind. You're like. 30 kilometers out, all right? You're not even in the game. Mm. And this is why I was saying beforehand that I absolutely hated the pick because it was it's a character, if Rock Boom pulled out the Draven, even, Makes sense. even I'd still be like, okay, you could probably do it, but that's still kind of yeah. scary. When you were so far behind in game number one and then you're all-inning on a, like a early game all-in champion to snowball, Either you have an absolute, like, all-in play with your jungler already planned, which they didn't make the, the roam down to try they and maybe try do, it, yeah. but it got immediately shut down. And that's such a fine, like, line's fine edge to kind of get stuck balancing on because so much could go wrong. That's why and the I was so picked. worried for NKU once that happened, and that was it, basically exhibit A as to why. Because, yeah, it just takes one moment, and now you're... You're as far behind as ever, because even even isn't enough. Nope. I mean, Draven's just kind of one of those champions. You don't see him picked in pro play for a reason. Mm -hmm. You can't snowball with him. It's not safe anymore, right? When the turrets dealt more damage and when you were safer under your turret, yeah, sure, no problem. You can pick the Draven. But nowadays, it's like, hey, yo, guys, uh, there's a Draven in our lane. Have fun ganking him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's worth 100 gold at the end of the game because all he's been doing was dying. Basically. So, yeah, that's just that completely screws you over. Yeah, and of course, the last lane we didn't really necessarily touch on, and I will give credit, was probably the most uh, back and forth lane was the top side there. Cleave on the side of NKU, and then of course, Ricky up in the top lane. I'll give Cleave credit, was able to find some quick solo kills in both of those games onto yep. Ricky. But again, it was just the same old song on dance where this, both of the picks that Ricky had, whether it was the Jax or whether it was the Olaf, just seemed to scale much much better and as soon as maddie was making return trips up to top lane as well just to make sure that ricky was no longer behind and ahead it just once again snowballed it fell out of control and especially with garen specifically if um you're not like four and oh i feel like by an early point i think you're basically toast garen is an assassin in the top lane <laughs> or, like, made to be in the top lane. That's his whole thing. So, yeah, I mean, he's kind of useless in team fights. Like, all he does is run at someone, silence them, spin bot, and then R, right? That's his thing. His thing is to do that on the EDC, and then you're done, mm -hmm. right? And we saw it with, like, Adam and, uh, at, at the Worlds, right? But the problem is, once you understand that, like, it's a Garen. It's very one-dimensional. It's just a Garen. Just CC him <laughs> and then blow him up. Yeah, exactly. Like he, is, if you're not getting executed, he's doing next to no damage to you anyway. No. Just like, oh, just let him spit. Just let him go. If you have CC extra, okay, use it on them. Yeah. But I otherwise, mean, get everybody else. Then let's get this guy. And it's just he has no damage other than his execute. Yeah, it's it's kind of just the Garen curse. Don't get me wrong. In the solo queue games, he's terrifying. I am still traumatized, but. <laughs> And the higher levels of play, he's kind of useless. Yeah, and we definitely saw where the limitations could happen here after the Saints pit artist pulled off a fantastic 2-0 sweep over here. 
or versus NQ here in Nace Star League. Nace Star League, League of Legends, of course, is going to be continuing to happen throughout the next couple of weeks as well. Had a bit of a late start to the season. We'll see them again on Thursday. But for tomorrow, we are back with Nace Star League, but this time for Valorant. We get to play our friends at Harrisburg University. Been a little while there. Should be a good one. Going to be looking forward to that. But before we do close things out for the night, also a couple of thank yous to everybody in the back. We have TJ, Aiden, and Tommy holding down the fort here, production-wise. Considering we had a computer die on us five minutes prior to the broadcast, and you had absolutely no idea, I'd say they did a pretty solid job, don't you think? <coughs> yeah, that was... Uh, I, I, what even happened to the computer? Did it just, like, blow up? Just uh, decided to die? Gave up? Decide you know what I'm gonna go on vacation. It's we, lunch break. We needed to download more RAM apparently, so uh -huh. um, well, I'll have to take a look at that later. But um, any final thoughts here with this matchup before we close it up? Not really. It was a curb stomp on the second <coughs> game. The first game. I Game one was fun, at least, though. It was, it was well Game fought, Game one still. was close. Game one was close, and then the Saints said, oh, wait, hold on. If we play around with our food too much, we might actually lose. Uh, all right, full sweat mode. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. They flipped a the switch, and it was absolutely kill mode. I completely agree. But, Gabe, of course, thank you for joining me here on the thank commentary you very desk. Much for having me. With all the knowledge in the world, you're a league encyclopedia, and I definitely thank <laughs> you for it. You're talking about items, and this is like, Translate for translate this for me. Um, <laughs> what's it do again? But thank you for for, uh, for all of that. No problem. One final thing, of course, big thank you to the sponsors: Tim Hortons, Subway, the St. Clair College Alumni Association, St. Clair SRC. And I'm trying. And I'm the one who's actually kind of stumped. Uh, HyperX, of course. How how would we not have such a beautiful stage with all of these uh, peripherals, if not for all of you? So thank you all once again for making this happen. But we shall close things up for tonight. Thank you all for tuning in, and we will see you tomorrow at 8.30 for some nice Star League Valorant.